This one also affects us as individuals. So the other thing is that uh, when these barriers are in place, which can differ from one area to the other, it affects the number of young people around that area who want to access maybe a service or information when they need it. Especially adolescents and young people tend to be curious of knowing what is, what is the current trending topic, what is new, and when they cannot access, it means that the barriers are in place and we are doing these initiatives or we are bringing these initiatives so that we can be able to remove these barriers and have all young people accessing these services. So, uh, this one is a highlight uh, that I saw from one of our partners' websites that res the research or the recent research has shown that Providers are biased towards unmarried young people who try to access contraceptive services. Sometimes they end up discriminating them or trying to direct them whenever they're doing the post services, the pre-service counseling, to tell them that maybe you can use this method, don't use this one, this one is good for you because you are young. So it tends to affect them. And discrimination towards young people manifests in many shapes and forms at facilities. Facilities, in this case, we mean the hospitals, the dispensary, or the health centers. From refusing to provide contraceptive to unmarried youth, to only informing the young women about short-term methods. So, uh, I believe this is one of the biggest issues among, among most African countries, whereby, if you are not married, the service provider will believe you're not supposed to be accessing this service. So it tends to create a lot of barriers between young people and the service that they want to access. So before we continue, uh, I would like to have a moment so that I can, I can go I can go through some of the messages that we are I'm receiving here. So you can have this moment, like two minutes, to check your text messages. You can look at you can look at your emails or something. So before after two minutes, then I'm going to continue. Oh, 
Does anyone have a question? Thank you, Sarah, for your, for your question. I've seen it. I'm trying to put the slide on on a slideshow, but I, it it seems my laptop has a challenge with it. I don't know. You said that. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we should continue, should we? Yes, but Sarah had a question. She asked. Sarah. Um, she had a question. Yes. Yeah, the I, I've seen the question. How can we, as yeah, medical students, help reduce the barriers? Yes. So maybe we answer that before we proceed. So, uh, as I said earlier, everyone has a everyone has a role to play even though we cannot wait we cannot wait for the medical students to come out of the medical school so that they start providing friendly services but at this point even in the campuses where you are in you are people of influence i believe in most campuses i've seen the experience i've seen in kenya people really respect medical students and from that point of view it means you have a lot of influence and from your influence you can use it to try and bring these issues gradually because for now medical students are going to do a lot of role in advocacy apart from the service provision that you will start providing maybe after graduation or after you've gotten a job you can also do the advocacy part of it. I know most campuses have clinics or health centers or sanitoriums or dispensaries. But you, 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 will, you will agree with me, most young people or most students don't access services in the, in the health facilities that they have within the campus. If you ask yourself why, it is because of the barriers that I've just mentioned above. These barriers are the ones that make young people not to trust the service providers. But again, it is the same students or young people who feel helpless. They feel like they cannot change the situation. So to answer Sarah's question, this is the place or this is the part where you need to come in and say that everyone has the right to access health services. And for us to make accessibility accessible, that English, we should be able to change this and that. We need health providers who have been trained on youth friendly services. We need to improve privacy. We need to improve confidentiality so that these young people can be able to come in and access service to the facilities that they have. So what I'm trying to say is that at this point, we all need to be advocates of 
with friendly services. And when you're going to become finally a medic in future, you it can begin with you. You don't forget what you fought for. If you're an advocate, it will live with you and you'll be able to provide with friendly services. So I believe advocacy is the first thing that you have to do now. Then in future, you're going to provide the services in a youth friendly manner. So I think I've answered you. Have I? Sarah, have I answered you? She said okay, yes, so you I, I want you to. She said yes, you have. In the okay, I want you to help me here. Like, I'm trying to put a slideshow. Kindly let me know if it if it appears as a slideshow. Is it a slideshow now? No. I don't know what is wrong. But I think for today, we can just continue the way it is. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to adjust. Is it okay? Okay, so let's, okay. Let, let's continue. So I hope everyone is back. We are going to continue from here. Remember today, it is majorly the introductory part. Tomorrow is when you're going to look at the details of the friendly services. And as you can see, the training objectives are quite simple here. To improve the awareness about the barriers and the facility and the and facilitators to adolescent and youth friendly health services. So first of all is to create awareness among medical students to know what youth friendly services are. It is a good concept. The other one is to build medical students capacity and skills to address the special needs of adolescents and young people. The other objective is to enhance youth access to sexual and reproductive health services maternal child health and hiv with us with with special clinics these are the ccc comprehensive care clinics and also provision of referrals because we say if you cannot be able to address the issue at that point you should be able to refer and i believe referring to sarah's question referral is another thing that medical students should take seriously at this point because I know in one or the other, other students might reach out to you with a problem and they might want you to address the, the problem that they are having. Maybe you might not be licensed or permitted by law to, to start offering services at the, at the point where you are. But if these young people need the services, you can be able to refer them. That is another role that medical students can play in offering these services. Uh, the other thing is that we're also trying to introduce the medical students to best practices in sexual reproductive health service delivery. Uh, youth friendly services has been noted by UNFPA and World Health Organization and other organizations like the International Planned Parenthood Federation as one of the best practices when trying to reach out to adolescents and young people to offer reproductive health services to them. So I'll go on.
So these are some of the key facts highlighted by the World Health Organization uh, on young people. Initially, I'd only put statistics on the situation or the situation analysis about the Kenyan context. But because I realized we have participants from other countries, I decided to include the global context or the global overview of young people. So there are more. They, we have more than 1.1 million adolescents aged between 10 to 19 years. Those ones are also referred to as teenagers. Uh, they die in 2016. More. This statistics is from 2016. They died, and over 3,000 died every day, mostly because of preventable or treatable causes. And when you look further, these are mostly deaths which result due to and safe abortions. Like in Kenya, we lose 2,600 women every year due to unsafe abortions, and quite a number of them are young people below the age of 19 years. The other thing is that road traffic is also categorized as one of the issues that affect young people and leads to a lot of injuries and death among adolescents. This is also drawn from 2016 statistics. And other major causes of adolescent death include suicide because of mental health challenges, interpersonal violence, uh, again, GBV is one of the leading causes in violence, and then you have HIV and AIDS and other diseases and infections. And uh, the other thing is that half of all the mental health disorders in adults will start by the age of 14 years. Uh, but most cases, are undetected and untreated. This is especially to, to us in the Kenyan context or the African context. It is just recently that most of the African countries started taking mental health issues as serious health issues among young people. Uh, in some years back, they used to say it's either witchcraft, black magic, juju, or spiritual issues. Some of them could just say it is just pretending or they could take some of these mental issues as part of the adolescent growth and development changes. They, sometimes our parents, you can be stressed or you can have depression. Your mother can just say maybe ah, it's because they're growing up. So most parents used to take things lightly. And then when these young people grow up, it ends up affecting them. And then globally, there are 44 births per 1,000 girls aged between 15 to 19 years. This one is now the global perspective. In Kenya, I know in 2019, close to 248,000 teenagers gave birth. That is according to the latest statistics of UNFPA. And that one is is quite an issue. Recently also in the country, in Kenya, we are facing huge number of young girls who are pregnant. In the four months, we have had COVID-19 pandemic and it is causing quite a debate among organizations, the government, departments, and even in the media and social media because some people are saying the numbers are facts, some are saying the numbers are not factual, but the fact remains that most young girls became pregnant during this pandemic period because they could not access the essential services. So these are some of the main health issues among young people. I'd already highlighted some of them. So we have, it is not, it, they have not been arranged in, in according to the number of the impact they have. It is just a random selection ignore the numbering but we have hiv as one of the biggest not not really men mental health not really reproductive health but health in general so hiv is there hiv and aids among young people we have early and unintended pregnancies among teenagers and girls we also have violence this includes gender-based violence and other forms of violence. It can also be sexual, gender-based violence like rape and defilement. 
I hope you're not getting a lot of noise from my side. Um, I'm at home and kids are screaming outside. The other thing is that you also have mental health issues among young people. I'd already talked about that one. We have nutrition and micronutrients deficiencies, which affects adolescents and young people, especially girls who suffer from anemia or lack of the essential minerals they would require to, for them to have a stable reproductive health life, like the iron and folic acid, among others, including calcium. The other thing is the alcohol abuse of alcohol and drugs. This one has affected quite a number of young people, especially the young people who inject drugs. Uh, the other thing is also the rights of adolescents are mostly not protected by either the government and their parents or the right holders. And the other thing is that the adolescents are not enabled enough to become responsive of their own rights. So they just live not knowing the rights. So we need to educate the young people on their rights so that they can grow up knowing when they can access a service, essential information, their right to health, their right to education, among other rights. And we also need to have young people holding the policymakers accountable so that they can formulate policies which are responsive to their rights and not the ones which are punitive in nature. So these ones will mean adolescents will be meaningfully engaged. This, that is one of the other strategies that can really, can really catapult or accelerate access to youth-friendly services. And then lastly, we have other infectious diseases, including STIs and infections such as COVID-19 is also affecting quite a number of young people. They cannot be able to do what they're supposed to do. And so it has affected their, it has affected education, it has affected jobs, it has affected quite a lot among young people. So that one is basically an overview of the health challenges or the health issues among young people that we are going to look at deeply tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So today it was just the introductory part. And right now I would like to take, if there are any other questions, I welcome the questions. Then the other thing is that I had formulated uh, a pretest. which is going to to guide me which is going to guide me to know what you may, you may want to know you may want to know so kindly if there are any questions you can you can ask so you can also post some of the suggestions of the topics or the of the or the issues that you want to learn about when it comes to access to youth friendly services So before I forget, I also wanted to inform you that through the WhatsApp group, I'll post, I'll post a link that has, that will direct you to the pretest questions that I came up with so that you can be able to, to take part in the pretest form. So I'll do it via the WhatsApp group. Kindly, can we have questions or suggestions or anything you would like to say? 
about the session that you have had today because that is what I prepare for today. Um, Kevin, there's someone who's asked in the group about um, road traffic injuries. Abdul is asking, from the presentation earlier, road traffic injuries have not been the major cause of death among young people, have been the major cause of death among young people, but you have not included it among the key health issues. Don't you think it's important to have them addressed? That's his question. Uh -huh. From the presentation earlier, road traffic injuries have been the major cause of death among young people, but you have not included it among the key health issues. Don't yeah. you think it's also important to have them addressed? Uh, I, I, did I did I not include them? I thought I included them. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I think it's also important it is very important to also address them. In fact, it should be integrated while offering other services. So I agree with you, Abdul. Road traffic is one of the issues you are going to address. But again, when you look at it keenly, I've included drugs and alcohol abuse as one of the major health issues. And use of drugs and alcohol is the major cause of road accidents again. So, I've included it as a, through the drugs, you can be able to address the issues of accidents among young people. Okay. And then um, someone... Linda is asking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was just saying, I was asking, the issue of unsafe abortion has not been highlighted as a main, as a main health issue among young people. That's what Linda is saying. I think mm -hmm. it's a concern. Yes, and safe abortion. Uh, just again, that one is going to be addressed under the issue of early pregnancies and childbirth. Mm -hmm. Like these are the these are the main ones. But still, tomorrow we are going to look at some some of the issues coming in. Because if I start putting them as standalone challenges, then there there are so many. But you know. Abortion is, a is as a result of pregnancy. Is it right? Mm -hmm. So that is where we are going to address okay. the issue of unsafe abortion. Okay. Um, Hajara is asking, we have had issues of incest during this time of COVID-19. Could we relate this to parents or guardians not playing their role? Yeah. The guardians have a bigger responsibility to make sure that the young people at home are responsible and behaving in accordance to the family values, uh, the religious values 
or the values are, that they have brought them up with. So when you look at incest, it is a sexual deviation that can lead to pregnancy also. And it's also, uh, in Kenya, it is recognized as sexual gender-based violence. So I think parents have a bigger role to play uh, to educate their children. And if we have so many cases of incest, it means parents have not played the role of educating their young people on how they're supposed to be responsible at home, especially when it comes to sexual responsibility. So parents fail, yes, but we cannot keep blaming them. All we need is to find solutions on how to address such issues so that they don't happen to the next person. Yeah. All right. Someone is asking where we can access the link to the pre-evaluation test. Yeah. Uh, the link I'll share. I'll share the link in the in the WhatsApp group. I will share the link. Okay. Sarah is also asking, can you talk about how we can offer youth friendly services to the youth in the rural areas? Because according to her, this is not talked about often. Yeah, uh -huh. that is that is very true. In the rural areas, the good thing about when you look at the Kenyan context, I don't know about other countries, but in Kenya we are the health health is devolved. It means health can be provided in the smaller governments or the in Nigeria they call them federal governments. I know some countries have federal governments, for us we call them counties. So I know most counties are really trying to bring about the youth-friendly services. But another thing that I'll talk about tomorrow is we have quite a misunderstanding on what youth-friendly services are. According to the policymakers and most leaders, they think youth-friendly services is building, is building a separate hospital for the youth or giving one office for the youth to go and access service. Most of them think it's a structure. Youth friendly service, it's, it's a program. It is not a project. Because we know a project has a beginning and an end. But a program is something that is ongoing and it keeps improving with time. So when you look at our rural areas, we really need to have youth friendly services programs. We can start by training a service provider, a nurse, and the young people or the youth or the medical students who have a rural area. You know, some people have rural areas. <laughs> so people like me are just born here in town and we don't know our rural areas. So when you go to the rural areas, as a medical student, you can try and engage the service providers of the local dispensary or the health facility that you have. Ask them how many young people, you know, having the, doing mapping, having data, how many young people access service here? And what can you think you can do so that we can make more young people to come for services. Not only reproductive health services, but even information. Because you know it is better a young person to access information about, for example, condom use from a nurse than accessing it from, from a friend somewhere who does not have the adequate knowledge. So it is true, this information and these services are not in the rural areas. But before we reach in the higher levels of government, we as the medical students can begin at the level where we are. And I keep saying everyone has a role to play. Go talk to the service providers, let them get to have an understanding of what this is. I come from a county known as Nakuru County and I know they have trained quite a number of, of service providers in the rural areas to offer youth friendly services, but we still have a long way to go. And I know other African countries also and Asian countries are also trying to integrate youth friendly services in all levels of service provision. So, like I said earlier, let's begin with advocacy. Let's begin with understanding our context, understanding our areas, so that whenever we want to bring the intervention, it can be quite easier for us to, to know who to go to and where to begin from. But I agree with her, we really need to get these services in the rural areas. Okay, and a question from Baji. 
I think that youth problems, especially those related to SRHR, considering mm. uh, are considering all the community. My question is, how can we include the different parts of the society in our journey? So the question is about how we can make it inclusive. Yes. No. Yeah. So you're asking how we can include the whole community in this in friendly services. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh every, everyone, every one of us understand our community better. Sometimes we have communities whereby you cannot access these services because it's against the religion or it's against the culture. And if that is the case, it is always good to begin with these people, the community gatekeepers. These are the elders. These are the administration assistants in your area. Another thing is the religious leaders in our church. We have quite a number of challenges that can hide mm -hmm. in the name of religion. In Islam, the same, mm -hmm. every religion, because we are people, and in every religion you have young people. And whenever you have young people, they have reproductive health challenges because as we looked in our introduction, adolescents are people who are growing every day, having different experiences, yes. wanting to do different things, wanting to experiment. And that is where values come from. So to avoid conflict, it is good to address reproductive health issues from the values point of view of the community. If if it's Muslims, for example, try and reach out to the Madras teachers or the, the religious teachers and maybe get to understand what does the religion say about this? How should we go about it? And you can take it further. How can you address it in this present present world? You know things have changed and young people have changed as well. So get them to buy the idea, get them to understand the challenge, so that if they are trying to address it, they'll address it from a progressive point of view. Even the, the cultural or the elders, because elders are the cultural custodians in our community. They're the ones who can allow young people to access services or not. So if they get to understand the challenge, they will get to participate in offering the solution. This is a case you have seen a lot in female genital mutilation. If you cannot go through the elders, it will become quite a challenge. Even if you involve the police, it becomes so hard. So we don't want to use force. We want it to be addressed from a progressive point of view and we have to make it inclusive. The other part of it is including the young people themselves. Let them know this is a challenge to them. Let them be the ones pushing for change. And when they're the ones who are leading from front, guys it appears that our facilitator has had some network issues so basically this was what the introductory session was to cover i promise you that the coming sessions will be having more interactive sessions we'll be having case studies and we'll also be having a few games here and there online so for now i just want to thank you all for coming it was a pretty much a short uh, session 
there was nothing, it was just an introduction to your friendly services so that people can get the general idea. And um, I will be sending the link of the pre-evaluation test and the feedback form to the WhatsApp group. And I'll also be forwarding the slides after every session to your individual email. I will take care of that. So other than that, uh, unless anybody else has anything else to ask I'm, or any comments, I think I will now officially say that our first session is done. I trust, I hope that you all have a good morning, evening, afternoon, depending on where you are. Yes. So, um, yes, goodbye to all. You can all feel free to leave the group right now. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Adios. Muera, va. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.